Hi everybody, this is Eugene O'Loughlin and welcome to my series of short how-to videos. In this video, we're going to learn how to embed an if statement in a for loop in R. So one of the things we're going to need to be able to do when we're learning a basic programming language like R is to be able to write loops within loops. So a for statement is an iterative or a loop statement and an if statement is also an iterative statement or a loop statement as well. So to illustrate how this works, I'm going to create a simple vector called x on line 5 here. Using the combine operator, you see I am assigning values of 2, 5, 3, 9, 8, 11 and 6. So I've got 7 values in here, so let me create that first. We can see the values listed uh, as uh, numerals from 1 to 7 and there's the values in the global environment. And so what I'm going to do uh, to illustrate how an embedded if statement in a for loop works is I'm going to loop through this um, vector and determine if the values within the vector are even numbers. So we can see that there are seven values, so I need to loop through the vector seven times. And on each iteration, I'm going to check if the number is an even number. So when I come in through it the first time, we can see the first value is 2. So I'm going to check is 2 an even number, and we can see that it is, and therefore I want to uh, count that as an even number. We go in then and we check the second value, which is 5. We can tell already that that's not an even number. So if that is not an even number, I don't want to count it as an even number, and so on and so on until we get to the end of the vector. And we can see that there's a 2, an 8, and a 6. So the answer we're expecting to get there for the number of even numbers in this vector should be 3. So in order to uh, figure out how this works, I'm going to need a counter. So I'm going to create a variable called counter and assign it a value of zero to initialize that counter. So we're going to see that in a moment. So I want to count the number of even numbers and store that in a variable called counter. Now, my outside loop, if you like, is going to be a for statement. So that's the for function, for open and close brackets. And I now need to check. So I'm going to loop through the vector called x. I'm going to loop through that seven times. So I'm going to use a temporary variable called val and my operator uh, in, not an operator, um, a parameter in, and uh, the vector name is x. So I'm going to check this statement here will loop through the vector called x. It will loop through it for the number of times there's values in, in x and we know that there are seven. So then after this I need to put in my curly brackets. So in our studio just type in the left curly bracket and the r appears automatically. Press enter in between and we get a, a blank line on line 10. And it's in here I want to write my if statement. So remember Line 9 is going to go through each value one at a time. So as it's going through each value, I'm going to check if that's an even number. So let's go ahead and do that. So if the first value is an even number, I want to count that as an even number. If any value is an even number, I want to count that as an even number. And if any value is not an even number, I don't want to count it at all. So I'm going to use an if statement to check here. So you can see that my if statement is embedded inside the for statement. So open and close bra um, brackets. And I'm going to, uh, this is the important piece in this piece of code, uh, is how do I check if a number is an even number or not? So I need to check if val, so that's the, the value, there's seven of them, so I'm going to do this seven times, uh, val, and then use the modulo operator, which is a double percentage sign. So the modulo operator finds the remainder of a number after division of one number by another. Sometimes we call this a modulus. So the modulo operator, so if I divide by two, if that is equal to zero, double equal sign, so if my value divided by two is equal to zero, that means then it's an even number. So if I divide two, the first value is two, so if I divide that by two, so two divided by two is one, there is no remainder. So the modulo here would be zero, that means that will be counted as an even number. On the second of the seven iterations, we're going to check the value of five. Now five divided by two, the answer as we know is 2.5. That means that the remainder, 0.5, is not equal to zero. Therefore, we don't count that. The same with three, what we divide three by two, we get a remainder. We divide nine by two, we get a remainder. If we divide eight by two, we get four, no remainder. So that's the second number in the vector that's going to be counted and we need to count that. 11 divided by 2 has a remainder of 0.5, and 6 divided by 2 has no remainder at all. So this is where my counter comes in. So if the remainder is 0, press enter in here, create new line 11, and we're going to increment the counter. So I'm just going to use the assignment operator, so as counter plus 1. So to 
go over this again, we've got our outer loop, which is a for statement, which allows us to iterate through my vector seven times. It's doing it seven times because there are only seven values in the vector. Each vector, each vector element then is checked to see if it is an even number and we're using the modulo operator to do that. So if the remainder is zero, that means it's an even number. So if, when we divide a number by two, if the remainder is zero, uh, therefore it is an even number. And if that's the case, we increment the counter by one. So we're counting them one at a time. So we're expecting in our vector uh, two, eight, and six are the only even numbers in our uh, vector containing seven values. So that when we run, so let me uh, initialize the counter first of all. So we can see in our global environment that a counter is zero and then run our for with the embedded if statement. So when I run this, we can see that the um, counter in the global environment has a value of three. Uh, let's go ahead and just print that for our code. So print counter. So if I print my counter value in the, in the scripting area, we can see in the console that the uh, value is a value of three. Now again, be careful here when you're writing loops uh, to rem remember to check the logic. So if you do some editing on your statement, let's say for example, you have an error or something like that, uh, you want, might need to reset the counter. So if I run this lines nine to line 12 again, without resetting the counter, you can see that if I print counter again, that counter goes up to a value of six. And that's because I did not reinitialize the counter. So uh, make sure you do this and make sure you check the values of counter. We can see in our global environment that counter has a value of six, val has gone up to a value of six, or va uh, x stays the same. So uh, in order to make sure that this works correctly, let's reinitialize the counter and then run my code again and print the value for counter and we get it back to three. So that's how you embed an if statement in a for loop in R. I hope you found this video useful. Thank you for your attention.